G'day guys, welcome back to yet another video on the True Footy YouTube channel. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at some of the worst AFL coaching stints since the year 2000. Now to contextualize this a little bit, does seem a little bit harsh. We're gonna be focusing on the coaches that probably have some of the worst win-loss ratios in their time coaching a football club. But some of these coaches were undoubtedly sort of entering a club with a list that was clearly rebuilding or, you know, with a culture that was a bit trash. So some of the percentages given are not quite fair reflections of maybe how good that coach was in his role. So there's no doubt that some of these coaches were better than others, despite what some of the stats may say. So this video will be taking a look at the 10 coaches since the year 2000 that performed the worst in their time. Now, before we get into the content of this video, guys, I would appreciate if you could take the time to subscribe if you haven't already. It has come to my attention that more than half of you, I think around about 54% of you who watched my videos over the last month are not subscribed. I'm trying to get to 15K by grand final day. I'm a little bit behind the eight ball in that respect, but with a bit of help from you guys, you could get me a lot closer. So if you could take the time to subscribe, it would be much appreciated. Anyway, let's get into the video. First coach I'm going to nominate is Justin Lepich of the Brisbane Lions, who took over and succeeded Michael Voss in that 2014 to 2016 period in which he coached 66 games. Now, over that period, he had a win loss ratio of 14 wins, 52 losses for a winning percentage of just over 21%. I think he had seven wins in his first season four in his second, and three in his final season before eventually getting the flick. He took over at a particularly low ebb for the Brisbane Lions footy club. Of course, they had the go-home five with guys like Elliot Yo, Jared Polek, Sam Doherty, Billy Longer, and from memory, Patrick Carnesis as well, were the five players to walk out on the club. So it was a period where their culture and of course their on-field performances were at an all-time low. Now, as we know, Lepic was replaced by Chris Fagan for the 2017 season. And of course, Fagan's done wonders there, but Lepic had a bit of success of his own, moving to the Richmond Footy Club and being an assistant coach for three premierships there. The next coach we're going to nominate is Fremantle's Damien Drum for his stint as head coach there between the 1999 season to 2001. And we know Damien Drum did play football for the Geelong Footy Club and is expected to sign on for the Collingwood job at the end of 1999 as well, but instead signed for Fremantle. He was head coach there for just 53 games in which he won 13 games, lost 40, and had a winning percentage of just 24.53% of the games he coached. Now, it's important to note that in the late 90s and early 2000s, Fremantle weren't a particularly strong club in terms of their expectations, and you know, to that point, they hadn't played finals. He went 5-17 and 17 in his first season at the helm and then improved significantly in his second season, going 8-14, and 14, which is, of course, three wins better than the previous year. But in his third season, he started the year 0 oh, and nine and was eventually sacked. He would be replaced by inaugural club captain Ben Allen, who didn't fare much better in the role, but it has to be said, looking at Damien Drum's particular stint there, it was one of the least successful coaching stints of the modern era. The next coach we're gonna nominate is Peter Rode of the Western Bulldogs, who was head coach there between the 2002 and 2004 seasons. Now, Peter Rode took over as caretaker coach after Terry Wallace left the club in 2002, and similar to some modern names such as David Teague and Brett Ratton, he kept the job for another couple of years. But it wasn't a particularly happy time in the Bulldogs. He coached for just 45 games, had nine wins, one draw, and 35 losses. His winning percentage at the club was just a mere 21.11%. In his first full season at the club, he won just three games. and his second season, they won five, which was enough for the board to sack him and replace him with Rodney Eade, who, as we all know, had a much more successful period at that club. Now, Peter Rode is still around today as part of Port Adelaide's football department. The next modern coach we're going to nominate is Brendan Bolton, who was, of course, coach of Carlton between the 2015 to 2019 period. Now, going into his tenure at Carlton, Brendan Bolton obviously coached for a little bit at Hawthorne at times as senior coach in the absence of Alistair Clarkson while he was battling illness, and he went at 5-0 in his short time as head coach. This proved a pretty successful audition for the Carlton job as Bolton was appointed to senior coach in replacement of Michael Malthouse. Bolton's tenure at Carlton would last just 77 games, of which he yielded just 16 wins with a winning percentage of 20.77%. It's worth noting he took over at a pretty awkward time for Carlton, who sort of botched 
a bit of a rebuild with Malthouse. He went 7-15 and 15 in his first season, 6-16 six and 16 in his second season before dropping off entirely to go 2-20 and 20 in his third season. He would only last halfway through the 2019 season, going 1-10 and 10 before being replaced by David Teague. The Blues would then go on a bit of a winning streak under Teague, showed some significant improvement under him. But it's also worth noting that Carlton's form since then hasn't been overly noteworthy to really vindicate the sacking of Brendan Bolton. Hawthorne then welcomed Bolton back with welcome arms to their club and he's still there in the role of director of coaching. The next coach worth noting is Matthew Primus of the Port Adelaide Footy Club who was head coach there after a career as a player between 2010 and 2012. Unlike his playing career though it wasn't quite as successful he just coached the 47 games for a winning record of 13 and 34. His time as coach included Gold Coast's first ever win in an AFL match against Port Adelaide in round 4 of 2011 at Amy Stadium. After a promising start to his coaching career in which they went 5-2 and two under him in his first season, his team significantly dropped off the following year to go 3-19. and 19. In 2012, Port Adelaide were 5-13 and 13 and following a 6-goal loss to the GWS Giants, Primus was sacked. The power went on to make the finals the following year in 2013 and then all the way to a prelim in 2014, which more or less justifies the sacking of Matthew Primus as head coach. The next coach on the list is Mark Neald of the Melbourne Footy Club who coached between the 2012 and 13 seasons and Mark Neild was one of these coaches I alluded to who it's hard to know if we ever saw the true ability of Mark Neild as a head coach when you come into a club that was so broken both culturally and performance wise. He lasted just 33 games in the role for 5 wins, 28 losses and a winning percentage of just 15.15%. Given Melbourne's experience issues on the field, it made sense when Mark Neal came into the club and loaded up on some experienced talent like Shannon Burns, Chris Dawes and David Roden, but it didn't quite translate into wins on the field and they went 4-18 and in his first season and then when they were 1-10 and the following season, he was promptly sacked. Now like I said, it's harsh to judge him too harshly given where Melbourne were under the Dean Bay era just before him, but there were some horrid losses in the Mark Neal era as well, including a 150 point loss to Essendon, which kind of demonstrated that the things hadn't really improved. Following on from that train of thought, we will nominate Dean Bailey as well for his time as coach of Melbourne between 2008 and 2011. He was head coach for a period of 83 games in what has to be one of the bleakest periods I've seen of a football club in my entire time watching football. In those 83 games, he had 22 wins, two draws, 59 losses for a winning percentage of just 27.71%. Now, despite how badly things seemed at Melbourne, there was genuine improvement from the days over the course of his tenure there. He had three wins in his first season, four in his second before jumping up to an eight win season the following year. And then in the year he was sacked, they were actually seven, one and nine. Despite this slow improvement, the Melbourne footy club decided they had no choice but to sack him after a horror 186 point loss to Geelong at what is now called GMHBA Stadium. The lack of competitiveness was a real symbol of the Melbourne footy club during that period. And it is in stark contrast to the club that is there today. The next coach we'll nominate is Ken Judge of the West Coast Eagles, who was coached for the 2000 and 2001 seasons. Now, now for context, Ken Judge had a brief unsuccessful stint at the Hawthorne Footy Club as senior coach, was brought to a very successful West Coast Eagles side to replace Michael Malthouse, and that club had failed to miss the finals at any point throughout the 90s. There's no doubt that Judge was left with the dregs of what was a very, very good side throughout the 90s, and in his 44 games, he had just 12 wins and a draw. After a record of five wins and 17 losses in the 2001 season, he was promptly sacked and replaced by John Worsfold. As we know, the West Coast Eagles would draft Chris Judd that very offseason and go on to a very successful period for the club. The ninth coach on this list is Brendan McCartney of the Western Bulldogs who was coached between the 2012 and 2014 seasons. It's interesting to note that Brendan McCartney remains one of the few senior coaches ever to have never played at the highest level. But he cracked a gig as senior coach and managed to hold on to it for 66 games, of course only winning 20 out of that 66 for a winning percentage of 30.3%. In his three seasons they went five wins eight wins, seven wins before he was sacked and replaced by Luke Beveridge. And Luke Beveridge took them to sixth in his first year as coach before winning the premiership the year after. The final coach we have on this list is Alan Richardson from the St. Kilda Footy Club who would have one of the longest tenures of any coach on this list as he was coached between 2014 and 2019. Richardson was appointed coach of the Saints after Scott Waters had an unsuccessful stint as the Saints tried to rebuild from the post Ross Lyon era. He coached for 100 26 games for 43 wins, two draws, 81 losses, and a winning percentage of just 34.12%.
The Saints were no doubt rebuilding when he first took over. They had four wins in his first season, six wins in his second season, and then some market improvement with 12 wins and then 11. Following that, the Saints almost dropped into what could only be described as another rebuild with just four wins. And then in the final season of his career, he was sacked after the Saints were six and 10 midway through 2019. As we know, he was replaced by caretaker at the time, Brett Ratton, who then signed a more permanent deal. And of course, took the Saints to a finals run in the 2020 season. That's it guys. That is 10 of the worst performing coaches of the modern era. Let me know in the comments what you think I got right or what you think I got wrong or is there a coach out there that I potentially missed? Stay tuned for future videos including the more positive spin on this video, the 10 most successful coaches since 2000. I'll get working on that very soon. Like I said before guys, would appreciate if you dropped a sub, just help us to get closer to that mark of 15,000 subscribers by grand final day. That would be an absolute wet dream. <laughs> Thanks for watching guys and we'll see you in the next video.